Improving your diet in a few simple ways can help prevent and even manage certain health conditions. High cholesterol, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar can be prevented by simply adopting healthier eating habits. To help us navigate this discussion further today is registered dietitian Mariam Forgham. Welcome to Welcome. The Loft, Mariam. Thank you so much. It's such a wonderful display. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very <laughs> typical dietitian display, <laughs> for sure. Now, today we're focusing specifically on the heart and what we've got here is an array of heart healthy foods. Now, can I just ask you how important it is to have a diet that is good for the heart? Well, if you think about it, the heart is the core uh, and the essence of well-being. Yeah. So it's incredibly important and it's something that we tend to neglect because a lot of what causes heart disease are silent killers, mm. such as diabetes, insulin resistance, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You don't get a pain somewhere that mm. indicates there's, a, there's an imbalance. These are what we call silent killers that lead to heart disease. Jay, we've been talking all about the heart today and I know we've got a, a selection of heart healthy foods here. Do you have any questions for the doc before we get into these? <laughs> so I think let's start over here at the fresh produce because I think this is where a lot of people uh, get a bit caught up. You know, a lot of people don't like eating fresh, you know, free fruit and vegetables. How important is it to incorporate these in your diet to, to maintain a healthy sort of heart diet? And in terms of, I think as a chef, you know, obviously the, a lot of these product, uh, a lot of this produce gets cooked. Would that then limit the benefit that it would have on your body or would you rather want people to consume more as a whole food? I think a good balance of both um, because not all the nutrients will be killed during heating mm. and a lot of the foods that have got a lot of fiber or should I say the vegetables that have got a lot of fiber during the cooking process it makes it easier to digest okay. on the body mm. so it's good to have a balance and a good way of incorporating more vegetables is especially now in winter through our soups mm. uh, added to our stews our curries even into our rice dishes rice mm. doesn't have to just look like rice mm. we can add uh, spinach to our rice or grated carrot um, so to increase the fiber content of our foods and uh, have more vitamins and minerals mm. that we are, are consuming uh, Miriam we've got I'm just gonna come back to the, the the legumes and the seeds and the nuts can you just tell us a bit about everything and how why it's specifically good for us sure so what I love about here we have oats and the beans and the bulgur wheat, the lentils. They are what we call whole foods. So whole foods have not gone through a process. It is what basically it is, whole. So it's a single ingredient food in a sense. With everything natural, okay. nothing has been removed. So you get the fiber, you get the nutrients. Um, and the fiber is very important for heart health both soluble and insoluble fiber. The soluble fiber is the flesh of certain vegetables, fruit, once you've cooked the bean inside that bean. Mm. Um, and that gets digested and helps to lower cholesterol levels. The insoluble fiber is known as an undigestible type of fiber or indigestible. Um, so it's rough, it passes through the system and acts as a brush for the bowel. So it takes any of the excessive debris, fats, toxins from the mouth out through the system. So there is a place for both and both are equally as important. We've also got some fish here. We've got mm. some mackerel over here and we've heard about, you know, sardines, mackerel, uh, so all these high fat food, the fish are uh, a good source of fatty acids. Why specifically them? So they are specifically rich in omega-3 fatty acids. This is known as an essential fatty acid. So it's something that the body doesn't make naturally on its own and is incredibly important for lowering inflammation in the body. Mm. It's also a unsaturated fat, which means it helps with lowering the bad cholesterol in the uh, arterial walls. So it decreases the plaque that gets built up over time mm. and can lead to high blood pressure. Because if you think about a, a, a tunnel being narrowed, with plaque and there's water pushing through, which is our blood, the pressure goes up, the narrower the tunnel is. 
The omega-3 is also important for increasing what we call healthy cholesterol, so your HDL cholesterol, and that also helps to remove the plaque mm. on those arterial walls. Speaking about something that's also a bit polarizing is bread. So obviously for us as well, for me who is a bit more ignorant, the minute we, I want to sort of try and be a bit healthier, I automatically remove bread. Yep. I think that's just something that people do. I think that's a common um, um, mistake that people make. Talk us through some of the breads that you brought through here and how that ties into this whole idea of having a more balanced um, diet. Okay, well, I wouldn't say it was a mistake because a lot of our breads today are highly processed. Okay. It can last seven days, which is totally not natural and mm. still feel soft. So these breads, that's why they don't taste like more, mm. is your seeded breads. You can see it's got still the seed and the roughage of the mm. wheat. So it increases the fiber of the bread, keeping you fuller for longer. You're not going to overindulge in a bread like mm. this. Whereas white bread, it's very easy to overindulge mm. because it tastes like more. It's a refined sugar. Um, and basically it lowers the GI of the food that you're eating. So the, the more whole the bread is, even rye uh, and even sourdough bread, what happens is, is low GI means that the actual sugars from the carbohydrates are released slower into the bloodstream. So it helps you to regulate your blood sugar mm. rather than having a sugar spike, okay. which can create insulin resistance over time and lead to diabetes. Well, thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> to have another look at this heart healthy list of foods, visit our website afternoonexpress.co.za and remember to love your heart so it can love you back. Up next, we are giving you some tips on how to overcome heartbreak. <laughs>